My name is Kent Rollins. I live in Hollis, Oklahoma. Born on a ranch. Been a cowboy all my life. 52 years old. I've uh, cooked off this chuck wagon for 21 years. I've uh, entertained for about 20 years. Cooked for elk hunters in some of the most remote conditions that you can find. I've cooked in conditions that are 121 degrees. Had one heat stroke, but uh, I can get the job done. That's what I do. I cook for 17 cowboys, three meals a day. My day starts at 3.30 in the winter time. Uh, a lot of times you get up of a morning, it may be five, six degrees, wind chill would be 31, 32 degrees below zero. Uh, you cook all day in that, get to bed 8.30, 9 o'clock, you start over the next day. It usually takes three weeks. Uh, this old stove that we got here, and uh, call her old Bertha. She weighs 385 pounds. If I can load her and unload her by myself, I think that's heavy enough. 16 inch oven weighs about 44 pounds. You put something in it, it weighs a little more than that. You carry one of them around all day, it'll help your attitude, I promise you. So if you want to give me a chance, all you got to do is holler. I'll sure come out there and make a hand, I promise you. We grew up on a ranch all our life. You know, that's all we ever did was ranch and cowboy. And uh, my mother made sure that we all learned to cook, clean, and sew. She said, you'll need it someday. I never was for sure about the cleaning and sewing, but the cooking, she is right. So we'd trade off. I'd cook breakfast. Mom would go with them to feed at the house before we went somewhere else to feed, you know. Well, I, uh, it was pretty easy as long as I didn't have to clean it up. And I thought it was the grandest thing I'd ever seen and sort of got to where I enjoyed it and got to cooking a lot. Uh, some of them old timers didn't take a lot of pride in what they was cooking. It's just a meal so you go back to work, you know. And, uh, and I told myself, if I ever become a cook, I, I'm gonna cook something better than that. We started cooking on working ranches in, uh, back in the early 90s. And uh, it's something that uh, I guess is a part of history because it's something I'm not never gonna give up. So Ken, where uh, chicken fried steak originate? Well, you know, I think the first documented recipe that they actually have for chicken fried steak come 1940s, 1950s along in there. And uh, really it started out uh, not as any kind of delicacy, but some way to make meat more tender. I mean, when you, when you coat meat with a flour mixture and then you dip it in a batter and you fry it, not only are you increasing the size of your meat, but you're also giving it a different texture and it's going to become more tender. Today, Jeremy, we, we use a better cut of meat. We use a top sirloin. It's better maybe what they might have had at that time. And uh, it, it's a whole lot tender. It's a really good cut of meat. I, I love to use a top sirloin. People will call it cube steak or chicken fry. But a true chicken fry to me is always a good piece of top sirloin. Doesn't have the white piece of gristle that runs through the middle because people don't want to cut into a chicken fry and find a piece of gristle. They want to cut into a chicken fry and find meat. And that's what we're after. And, and we get our meat today from Harder House, south of Branson here. They're good people. I'm sure you know where they're at. Uh, they got a good top sirloin for us cut them about five and a half ounces, run them through the tenderizer about three times, and, uh, and it's quality. I've used their stuff before, so uh, there's no doubt in my mind it's just gonna get better. And, Sounds uh, great. We've just got this flour mixture here mixed up with a little of our seasoning. I'll tell you what, Jeremy, nothing I like better than washing dishes, just put them in there. All right, three eggs, and it, it depends on the amount of meat you, you wanna double dip here and whatever you wanna do with it. Add a little milk. And if you want to change this one more time and not use this milk, whole milk, use canned milk. Canned milk's always a little richer. And uh, on a ranch, we use canned milk a lot because we'll, it'll uh, give it a little richer texture, a little richer taste. And uh, we're gonna double dip them. Okay. If you want to go ahead and get one of them, put it in the flour. It, it, it's sort of like, you know they're gonna be good, Jeremy. It's like- It's all right there, look at that. Yeah, beautiful. when you're gonna, double baptize something, you're gonna dip it in here again and then take it out and then baptize it one more time, you know it's gotta be good. Careful that so it doesn't rip up on you. Keep a little bath. Get her over closer to you. You know, pork works, but that's the way it's good. That's right, get your hands in it. That's what you call a real chicken fried steak. Looks beautiful. We're gonna use the same grease we fried them chicken fries in. That's what makes gravy good. I don't care what state you're in. 
And uh, you gotta have a roux if you're gonna make any kind of gravy. And uh, we're just gonna use flour, canned milk, and, and water. Uh, my grandmother taught me how to make gravy years ago. And I've never made the same batch of gravy twice, I guess in 40 something years of cooking. But I prefer to use canned milk. It makes it a little richer. And water. We will take this back over at old Bertha and she's gonna finish it off here in a minute. A little salt and a little pepper and that'll do us. Hey, let's eat, I'm gonna throw it out. You know, we got this old chicken fried steak finally ready to go. And we're gonna plate it up here. We also made some of these Red River Ranch beans and uh, they, uh, they're a pretty staple of life down there where we come from. Then we have sparkling potatoes. We can't forget the gravy. Chicken fried steak is not chicken fried steak without good gravy. Sourdough biscuit. Blueberry cream cheese turnover. 